If you're into the indie shooter scene, well, you've probably heard of games like Dusk, Medieval, Ion Fury, and Wrath. And if that first wave of throwback shooters was trying to pay homage to games like Doom and Quake, well, it seems like we're looking at a new wave of shooters paying homage to things like Max Payne, Titanfall, and Fear. Case in point is Trepang 2, developed by the appropriately named Trepang Studios. Similar to another few indie shooters in the works like Ultra Kill, Get to the Orange Door, and Maximum Action. Trepang 2 is another one of those very mobile, gunfu kind of shooters focusing on incredible violence and fast paced gameplay. Where you're able to jump and slide all over the place, utilizing bullet time and fast movement to your advantage and taking down an overwhelming amount of enemies with complete ease. Trepang, however, feels much more like some kind of spiritual successor to Fear than anything else. Fear, of course, being Monolith Productions' 2005 shooter masterpiece and the kind of game that everyone should play before they die. No, seriously, if you haven't played it, go buy it. Finish it, then come back and watch this video. Right, now that you're familiar with Fear, you'll notice that Trepang is going to look very similar, and in a lot of ways, it's kind of like the true sequel we never got. I mean, it's much more Fear than Fear 2 was, that's for sure. It's still in a very early stage, but a playable demo is out soon on Steam, which will give you a pretty good rundown of what they're currently working on. And if this is the sign of things to come, well, the future is looking pretty bright, as well as bloodstained. Not much is really given away in terms of the story. After a really odd intro where you're watching some kind of low resolution video of all this stock footage, you wake up in some kind of room with your arms restrained. You're then freed and you start trying to make your escape, avoiding enemies for the first couple of minutes and stick into the shadows. There's obviously gonna be some kind of backstory to the character you're playing as, and they even tease it a little bit with the prologue, in a weird flashback where you're moving through what looks like a school corridor. Not sure if it's gonna involve demonic little girls, but there's definitely more here than meets the eye. This is also the game's way I think of trying to establish the stealth system. Basically, it allows you to get the drop on enemies, staying out of the light and their line of sight until you're in the best position that suits you to initiate combat. Anyway, after running away from a small group of bad guys, you finally get your hands free and get a pistol, and then things kick off for real. Aside from shooting things, the two abilities in the game are your slow motion and a cloak, but the slow motion is the real star here. Trepang seems to have a combination of those bullet time mechanics from both Max Payne and Fear. Seems making kills refills a big chunk of this, but it also slowly refills over time, to a point anyway. Your first encounter isn't going to be all that great, and you've just got to make quick kills to fill the damn thing up. Once it's good to go though, the game becomes a whole lot more enjoyable, and just how fast and chaotic you can make things is going to only be limited by the size of your throbbing erection. This might be some of the most visceral shooting I've seen in a shooting game in recent memory. Enemies are just standard military looking dudes, some who are armed with shields. But they'll all fall prey to their souls being removed from their body pretty quickly once you engage them. There's just something oddly enjoyable and sadistic about hearing these guys scream and freak out as you send them to their next plane of existence. <laughs> The violence in this game is so masterfully handled, like every weapon feels like you're just tearing someone apart down to their atoms. If you jib someone with a shotgun, you'll even see their goddamn digestive system in the air for a second before it splats on the ground. Yeah. Damn. You're not really just moving from corridor to corridor either, you're really moving from arena to arena. Each area kind of feels like a small deathmatch map, and the most obvious and straightforward approach isn't always the best. It's kind of a lot like Fear in the way that you can just keep replaying a checkpoint over and over and it's always going to play out differently every single time. I would literally just sit there for hours doing this in Fear, just replaying one checkpoint over and over. And it feels almost nostalgic to do the same thing here again with Trepang. Probably helps that the music is also baller. It's composed by a guy named Brandon McCacken, and you almost forget that there's music at all because of how distracted you get shooting things. But then you'll just hear a track playing in the background and it amplifies the action even more. I think good video game music is something that isn't overbearing, but just accompanies the visuals and the actions of the player. And I really think they've nailed that here. Honestly, I just can't deal with all these indie games having such awesome soundtracks. I mean, can't deal with it. Can't deal with it!
I can't believe it either, but this is also an indie game running on the Unreal 4 engine that both doesn't look like shit and actually seems to run really smoothly. I know, it's incredible. I mean, it's not an amazing looking game, but the visual effects, the textures, and the modeling is of a pretty high standard. And that filter they've used during slow motion creates this very stylized look that makes gunfights feel very frenetic. Controls are pretty simple to get the hang of. You press Q to go into bullet time and E to cloak. There's no iron sights though, which I think has been done as a way to force you to get in nice and close with enemies when engaging them in combat. Aside from that, you've got a stamina bar and you press shift to sprint and left alt to slide, which might be one of the most broken mechanics in the entire game. You see, when you slide into people in this game, it has the hilarious effect of just making their body defy the laws of physics, and they just ragdoll around comically all over the place. Everything has just been dialed up to 11. You can shoot massive chunks out of pillars, seeing the concrete and the rebar beneath and fire hydrants explode when you shoot them, killing anything nearby as if the hydrant was packed with TNT. Contact, There's a basic melee attack system too, so you press right mouse button to attack anyone with the butt of your weapon. And you can press jump and right mouse button to do some kind of jump kick, which looks janky as hell. But again, it's just kind of mirroring the mechanics from fear. Ah! Ah! Kind of reminds me a lot of the jank from Maximum Action, but again, it's the good kind of jank because it never comes at the expense of the enjoyment of the shooting. If something spurgs out and flies across the screen, I've got no issue with it as long as it amuses me and serves to heighten the enjoyment, which I can safely say it does. You can pretty much just slide into entire groups of enemies and send them all skyward like they're a bunch of bowling pins or something, and you've just hit them with a goddamn cannonball, and it never gets old. It also feels very similar to the sliding mechanic in a game like Titanfall and sliding into someone and popping slow motion as you empty a magazine into their floating torso is just really satisfying. In fact, if you're not sliding around and shooting people in slow motion, well, I'm afraid to say, but you're playing the game wrong. they're definitely going to have to balance out this mechanic because right now it really does feel broken. But again, I think it just adds to the whole appeal of how the combat plays out. Aside from that, you can pick enemies up and use them as a human shield, throwing them away like a piece of trash or snapping their goddamn neck like Steven Cigar, which is also fun. In terms of the weapons, there's not all that much on offer here, but it's more of a quality over quantity kind of deal. You start off with the pistol, which is pretty crappy and can't be dual wielded either, but maybe that's for a future update. Then there's a few different kinds of automatic weapons. You've got a vector submachine gun, then a couple other assault rifles, all of which I'm not sure what they're supposed to be based off. But they seem to do about the same amount of damage as the vector, and there's far more ammo for that than the others, so I use that one the most. The shotgun is where it's at though, and just like in Fear, this thing is an absolute juggernaut, and has that charming ability to basically turn most enemies into a shower of red mist. And I'm just going to say it, it's probably one of the best shotguns in any first person shooter I've ever played. Yeah, I said it, no backseats. <laughs> Only problem is that there's barely any ammo for this thing. Yeah, they're super tight us with the ammo for some reason, and I'm not a fan of that. There should just be an IV drip perpetually feeding shotgun shells right into my blood supply. A good shoddy is the cornerstone of any first person shooter, so just give me the goddamn shells for this thing and no one gets hurt. Well, apart from that guy. You can also throw grenades, and that looks awesome, but these things are about as hard to come by as high testosterone levels are in Pokemon fans. But again, throw out one of these things and watch how it breaks the entire physics engine. Now, the current version of the demo is broken up into the prologue level from the campaign, which won't take longer than 15 or so minutes to get through. Then you've got the horde mode, where you've got to survive 30 waves of enemies to unlock all of these cheats. Good luck with this thing though, I mean it's pretty easy up until about wave 20 or so, but then the difficulty spikes like a motherfucker. This is probably the best mode to play with though if you just want to bugger around with the mechanics and get the hang of things. There's a bunch of difficulty modes here, but the two main ones you're going to want to try are normal and hard mode. Normal mode is challenging without feeling too tough, and hard mode describes itself as punishing, which it is, and it's the one that offered up a genuine challenge. Overall, Trepang 2 right now, even in this early state, is just awesome. It's hard to guess what they're going to do with the storyline, or even what we can expect in future updates, but even in this current build, the shooting itself, which matters the most, is just very promising. Uh, 
I'm interested to see how they're going to break up the action in future updates though, because as good as the shooting is, it's going to be a bit of a letdown if that's all you're going to be doing in the levels. I mean, they need something in between to let the player catch their breath. I don't think we'll ever get a new Fear game from Monolith Productions, so for now, this thing is going to have to do. But you know what? I'm okay with that. It does what Fear did, and it does it as good, if not better. The indie sheen that this game has is overshadowed by just how ludicrous, chaotic, and fun the base shooting mechanics actually are. So check out these guys on Steam and Twitter and keep an eye on this thing, because I think it's going to be worth it.